you guys, how's it going? My name is Thomas Brush. I make indie games for a living. I've made a game called Neversong, a game called Pinstripe. I'm currently working on a game called Father. Um, I do this full time. I also run an online school, so my income comes from games, game sales, comes from platform deals, publisher deals, and also selling tools, resources, and courses. So there's sort of my portfolio, just to give you an idea of kind of what I do. Now, the beginning of my career was mostly making games, right? Just selling games, selling copies of games. Then I started partnering with publishers. Then I started partnering with platforms. Then I started creating resources and building a community and just building my social presence. I say all this because it was a long process and every source of income for my business um, would either change or it would just sort of stack, right? So my income has grown because I'm just willing to change and shift and try new things and partner with new people, partner with new platforms. For example, I partnered with Apple Arcade for Neversong. Um, so it's always changing, right? It's never, never exactly just one source of income. Well, <clears throat> I had a friend, and there's no reason to mention who it is. <clears throat> I had a friend um, who worked really, really hard for, I think it was like five years on his indie game and it just tanked. The whole process sucked creating the game and then it just didn't do well. It didn't make money. Um, and he started releasing content bashing people like me, like pe YouTubers who, who run channels, who talk about how to get into the indie game industry, right? And how to start a career. I mean, I run a course about this, so I'm definitely teaching people how to do it. And his, his sort of final thesis about game dev and also about people like me is that it's way too risky. How dare you tell people to, to give it a shot and do it? Um, and my response to that is, yes, it is very, very risky. And before we talk about that, guys, just remember you can download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. You can use it however you want. You can make a million bucks off this game kit. I really don't care. I actually used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in just 14 days. So be sure to check that out using the link below. So the answer to the question of is game dev too risky, uh, specifically indie game dev, is indie game dev too risky? The answer is yes, it is very, very risky. It is only too risky if you do the following, okay? The first thing that you do that makes it too risky is you ignore your family, you ignore your friends, you ignore yourself, and you put all of your energy, your social energy, your spiritual energy, your creative energy into this project, then yes, you've gone too far, right? The second reason is, well, it's definitely too risky if it's hurting your mental health and you're just crashing and you're becoming a worse version of yourself, right? It is too risky if those two things are true or one of the, one of those things is, is true. So here's my point. My point is indie game development is a gamble. It's, it's the same thing as going to a casino and putting money into a machine um, and hoping that you get money back. That's, that's kind of what it is, right? You, you just, hope that you're bringing in more money than you originally put in, right? Well, a lot of you might ask, um, well, Thomas, what if I don't have money? Am I still wasting money? It, well, yeah, you're wasting time, right? Time is ultimately money. And so if you're a student right now, or, or maybe you're, you're, you're making indie games on the side, <clears throat> that time you're spending is, is cost, um, is costly. So you need to be thinking of, of your time, as money. Okay, so basically I've told you that time is money and you could potentially waste all of that money and all of that time and all of that energy creating a silly game that didn't bring in money, right? So what's the solution here? The solution is to treat it like any other entrepreneur, right? I've seen game devs <clears throat> talk about how indie game dev is, is unique and different than other online businesses or entrepreneurship gigs. And I don't think it is. I think it's the same thing. It's, it's running an online business. It's being an entrepreneur. And to be an entrepreneur is to be a gambler. There are no guarantees in entrepreneurship. That's why so few people actually do it. They, they don't follow through because it's scary. Um, essentially, you're, you're preparing to jump off of a cliff. You're hoping 
that your parachute opens, you're, you're hoping that you, you're prepared, and then you take that leap and you hope it works. So the way that you can gamble, and you can gamble wisely, and, and by the way, I don't recommend actually gambling, I'm just talking about entrepreneurship here, and this is just from personal experience in the last decade. The way that you can gamble and do it wisely, um, and this is whether you have a family or whether you're a student, whether you have more free time than others. I know a lot of you are probably parents. Some of you are students, um, and some of you are just young adults starting your, your career at a desk job. The way that you gamble effectively and wisely is you schedule it out for the week. You schedule out how many hours you're going to work on your indie game. And then you schedule out how long it's going to take. And you decide, you say, maybe look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm okay with throwing all of that time in the trash. I'm okay with losing it all, right? The same is true with putting money into more risky investments, right? The stock market, not so much, but like Bitcoin, especially right now, you know, you put Bitcoin in, you better be willing to lose it all, right? That's, that's kind of the, I think the way you should think about investing time and money in more risky endeavors. So you need to be okay with losing it. So never put in more time than you're willing to lose. So for me, when I first started making indie games, it was maybe two, three hours a day, five days a week, right? So it's like basically 15 hours a week. I was willing to lose all that, right? I was willing to say, you know what? That's time away from my wife. I didn't have kids at the time, so it was a little bit easier. That's time away from my wife. That's getting up early in the morning and not sleeping as much. So sacrificing time sleeping. And it's also sacrificing time sitting at my desk in my cubicle um, when I could be enjoying a lunch and watching YouTube videos. Instead, I would eat a sandwich in one hand and work with the other hand on my game, right? So be willing to lose that time. If you're not willing to lose that time, don't do it. Now, here's the thing. Are you actually wasting the time if your game doesn't do well? Not necessarily. I will say if you made one indie game, it flopped, and then you gave up, you probably wasted the time because what was the point, right? If you never used those skills in any other um, career opportunity or never really made another project, what was the point? If all you felt was shame and, and frustration and kind of hated yourself for making that indie game, then you wasted your time, right? So a good way to think about this is, Am I willing to, one, burn that time? Am I okay with it just being gone and, and failing? Am I okay with that? But also be thinking, yes, I did not make money from that, but at least I'm going to learn something and use that and apply that in some other career opportunity, right? So for me, I'm an indie game developer. I make indie games, working on one right now. Um, and you can check out my live streams. I, I live stream the creation of that game. It's called Father. But I also use those skills to seed other entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial ventures. So selling, selling tools, selling online courses, creating YouTube content, right? Those are other ways to bring in income, other ways to um, help my audience, help you guys out and help change people's lives. So it's not just making indie games and selling those games on Steam. That's not why I make games. That's just one income opportunity. Um, that's one project opportunity that can make people's lives better. There's all these other opportunities available. What I love to do as an entrepreneur is I love to spin plates. I've got like 10 plates spinning all the time. And these are just various income opportunities for me that also help you guys, right? So obviously be willing to burn all that time and say, you know what, it didn't work out. But at the very least, you can say, I learned something and I'm going to take that and apply it to a future opportunity. So the next time you hear uh, indie game developer horror stories where somebody worked five years on a game and it flopped, the next time you hear that, um, and if this individual is complaining, just remind yourself that this should be expected. You should expect, <coughs> excuse me. You should expect 
to fail. You should never start an entrepreneurship venture just thinking it's gonna succeed. You should be okay with failing. And failure ultimately is a good thing. It really is. Um, it doesn't feel like it when you're doing it, but to fail as an indie game developer means that you can go to the next game and make it better because you learned from the failures, right? One final thing I'll leave you with is when it, when it comes to, to gambling, gambling your time as an entrepreneur, gambling your time as an indie game developer, start gambling small, right? Don't gamble big. Don't say, I'm gonna dedicate 20 hours of my week to making indie games and I've got a wife and kids, right? And a, and a full-time job. Don't start like that. Here's a better way to start. I'm gonna make a small 10-minute game I'm going to release it for free on itch.io. I'm going to use that game to also build a social media presence so that ultimately that audience and also the things I've learned from that game will help me make a better game and sell it bigger and make some money next time. So start small and get better and better and better. That way it's not as much of a gamble. All right. People like me, I, I jump into things pretty head first, fast. And I, I'm a pretty aggressive about things I start, and that's not a good thing. When I when I started making my first commercial release, Pinstripe, I went in really fast and aggressive, and I think that um, I wasted a lot of time. I could have been a lot more patient, a lot a lot more resourceful. But all I wanted to do was get the game done, and so I would spend three hours a day, fifteen hours a week, on top of being a husband and being a full-time employee and looking back I feel like I wasted a lot of time and I gambled away a lot of time fortunately for me it paid off but I know that I'm fairly unique in the sense that most indie game developers it doesn't pay off so I just want to leave you guys with that especially towards the end of 2021 and also the beginning of 2022 for those of you who want to you know make a um, New Year's resolution to be an indie game developer. Just remember, it is risky and it, it is gambling. And you need to be thinking of small ways that you're going to slowly dip your toes into that gambling and be okay if it fails. If you're not okay with it, don't do it. All right, guys, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and as always, download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I use this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in just 14 days. Also, there is a link below for a webinar, and this webinar is how you can make six figures, no guarantees, but how you can make six figures with just a demo, with an incomplete indie game. Um, believe it or not, I secured funding to go full-time twice just by showing off an incomplete game to publishers, and to Kickstarter. So be sure to check that link out below, and I'll talk to you later. Cheers.